Yo, so this weekend, yours truly has been added to the card of the seminar that's being held called Leaving Religion. It's being held by Kevin Wesley with special guest speakers, Ricky Swank, Kylie, as well as Mr. Williams. And as a last minute ad, Coach Renz. Now I look forward to you guys being there if you can, but if you can't, uh, that's a, catch us at the next city. But definitely I want you guys to try to make it if you can to Charlotte this weekend, June 8th. Go to bornwinnersbdevolution.com. So go to Born Winners, the, website, the Facebook page, bdevolution.com and get your tickets today. It's gonna be a great opportunity, but I wanna give you guys a little bit of what I'm going to talk about, which is the middle way, the middle path, the wisdom of the middle way and the middle path. I'm gonna give you a little bit of that, but I'm talking about something far more reaching in leaving religion. So stay tuned. So what's up everybody, how you doing? This is your Coach Renz. And I wanna thank everybody for joining me here, especially every, all my Patreons. I appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. If you're finding me for the first time, we talk about the 360 degrees of life. As a mental alchemist, uh, we talk about your love life, your money, your health, you know, and your spirituality. So hit the subscribe button, hit that bell icon so you'll get notified anytime we do a live or anytime a new video drops like this one. So as I said, I'm, I was invited to come and speak at Kevin Wesley's Leaving, the Revol Leaving Religion seminar series, as well as the documentary that he's um, shooting. So I want to give you guys a little bit of the wisdom as the song by Ziggy Marley says, love is my religion, I don't condemn, I don't convert. So I'm not trying to condemn you, nor am I trying to convert you into anything. But Sardata has something wise to say when he talked about the middle passage, the middle way. Uh, and I want to share that with the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. And I'm going to give you a brief understanding of it, but of course, take what, you, what works for you, throw away the rest, but go and research any and everything that I say, because this is just me. I'm not you. We're all energetic beings that are existing in this reality, so I want you to take what works for you and not what works for anyone else. And that's one of the problems, that's one of the reasons. Because before I get started here, we seem to hone in on a part of spirituality that most would call religion, and it is just a piece of the pie. It is just a part of the ocean. It is as if, like the picture that I showed earlier, it is as if you, you are a fish inside of a bowl that sits inside of the ocean, and you think that the water that is inside your bowl is the ocean. When there is a vast array of spirituality out there, there's a vast array of knowledge out there. There's a vast array of energetic uh, uh, beings and laws of, of effect and, and all these different things, laws of attraction, laws of the universe, all these things, all laws of nature, all these things, all this information is out there for you. It's the understanding and perspective that changes everything. So I want to throw away your bowl and put you into the vast ocean so that you can experience it everywhere. And even if you think that you're in the Atlantic, you must realize that the water from the Atlantic was one day the water of the Indian Ocean, was one day the water of the Pacific Ocean, was one day the water of the, of the Arctic Ocean, was one day the water of all oceans. It was once a stream, it was once an aquifer, it was once in the atmosphere, it was once a rain cloud. It was once a part of a being that nurtured them, a part of a plant, that it is all connected. And it is all one, and, but it, at the same time, it is all the same. You know, although I can, oh, in my mind right now, I can go into uh, uh, the Sumerian text of how you had the fresh water and the salt water, and the two were separate, and then they became one, and then from that birth, you know. But oh, that's a video for later when I discuss the archons and and and, and the twelve council of twelve and all of that. But to give you an idea of what it when you're leaving religion the middle way has great wisdom in discussing this and right now i'm saying it's just a part of what i'm going to talk about i may even elaborate on it even more once i get to charlotte as i'm still debating because there's so much i want to share and I, and, and kevin's only giving me 30 minutes and y'all know i can get very long-winded so the four noble truths 
as spoken by the Buddha, Siddhartha, and recognize that Buddha is a title, much like Christ is a title, not a name, but a title. And many held the title of Christ prior to it being conformed into Christianity. That many held the title of Buddha in the Hindu, which is where Siddhartha originally was taught, many held the title of Buddha and the title of Buddha is actually more exalted than the gods or the angels actually the, the, what would be equivalent to the angels in the Hindu they were actually more exalted than that that if you reach the Buddha mind the Buddha head that it was like how it says in the Hebrew Bible that if you eat from this tree you will become like gods and when they did eat from the tree said that now man is like us and we must kick, kick him out the garden. He can't have everlasting life and be like us. Or in the Sumerian story, now man is like us. So we cannot let them know our technology because they will revolt against us. Because they are now like us. Because man has always had that capacity of, is it not written that ye are gods? So, because of that, that knowledge has been taken away. But because of that, we get stuck. We get stuck. We get stuck in not realizing that we are vast, that we have great potential, that we have great ability. So, to not get too stuck myself, because I can, and to not go into areas that I didn't mean to go into. So as just a title, and to not to try to convert anyone into anything, understand coming to that conscious level of becoming a Buddha, that conscious level of becoming a Christ. And that's what we're talking about. That's, that's the, what we're talking about as far as the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. So the Four Noble Truths, to not hold you too long, the Four Noble Truths, the first one is that life is suffering, called Dukkha. Life is suffering. The suffering that we experience in birth, the trauma of birth, the suffering we experience when illness arises, the suffering of old age, the suffering of death and the fear of death, the suffering of the separation from what you love and to whom you love, and then being stuck with what you hate. You see, all these things we take and we stay there. Most people are stuck in dukkha. Most people are stuck in this mindset, and I know some of you are going to make the joke that Dukkha is stuck in Dookie, so I'm going to make it for you. But <laughs> we get stuck in this mindset that there is piety in suffering. Even going as far as to taking vows of poverty, going as far as to always saying that the poor shall inherit to earth. Always saying that the meek shall inherit, that the, those who are last shall be first. Having these indicators, having these sayings, these thoughts, having these things permeate the brain keeps you in a state where you believe that suffering is your way to heaven, your way to what we'll talk about later, nirvana. But it's not. To live in suffering is not to reach your potential of being the fullness of what you are, of being able to create and manifest, to being able to come into nature and absorb you see today I was having or well, yesterday I was having sinus problems I was having sinus problems so I took I took an hour and I came and I sat in, in, in this beauty of nature and I meditated and I focused on soaking in this energy I focused on getting my body in the right frequency I'm, I'm playing my 528 megahertz while I'm meditating and I'm soaking in this energy so that I'm letting my body know that this suffering that you're going through with your sinus is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. I know you ate some things that you should not have eaten and that has made your immune system a little bit weaker. But then I got my tinctures and I started getting my, my elderberry tincture into my system and then came and sat in nature and meditated to get my body in sync, back in sync and took my shoes off and grounded myself to get my body back in sync. We have to realize we are part of all of this. And when you look at nature, nature is not living in its suffering. It's not accepting its suffering. No, it never does that. It keeps going. It doesn't attempt to solve the impossible problems. Many people, there's a question that someone asked me, uh, 
about what is my evidence for believing in a creator. At some point, there is no evidence that gives final proof of a creator, just as at some point, there is no evidence that gives final proof of a Big Bang. There is no, at some point, you have to say that there is an impossible question out there. Are we created or did we evolve? Do we adapt? Yes, we can see adaptation. But have we seen evolution? No. Have we seen a creator? No. So at some point, there is the I don't know. But also in that I don't know, there is the it's an unsolvable problem at this level of understanding. So I'm not going to sit in dukkha trying to figure it out, arguing with people back and forth trying to figure it out. So when I step away from religion, I don't venture off into another bowl that sits in the ocean. Another bowl that says this is, I, I, I was Christian, now I'm Hebrew Israelite. I was Christian, now I'm Muslim. I was Muslim, now I'm Buddhist. I'm not, I was Hindu, now I'm Christian. I don't sit and move from bowl to bowl while there's a vast ocean around me. So we must recognize that suffering, which is one of the things the Buddha saw. He saw suffering. Suffering is not the way to heaven. <laughs> Sorry. I know many of us who were born and raised in black America whose family went through the slave, slavery in America, we, we, get, we got a notion that those who suffer the most will inherit the most. But as we see in this understanding of life, that is not true. Nor shall it be true in any other dimension of life. In any other dimensional plane of life, that is still not true. And we will talk more about dimensions when I talk about the Archons and the Anunnaki in a later video. The second one, because I don't want to keep you guys too long, is the cause of suffering is desire. The cause of suffering is desire. Called tenop. Right? And that's just a Sanskrit. We're going to dispense with that. But it's caused by the desire. Wanting consistently. Thirsting, clinging, grabbing and clutching. While all the time ignoring the background. Many of you will watch this and you will only see me and you will only hear my words. You'll ignore the sound of the wind. You'll ignore the greenery that is behind me, that bug that just flew across my face. We ignore the background. We focus in on that one thing and we neglect to see everything else. We neglect to see the life, the beauty. We neglect to see everything that is wonderful in our life because we're focused on this one thing and we're clinging to it. And when it comes to the religion, we're so clingy to it that we have to move from bowl to bowl. We're so clingy to it that we can't get certain things out of our system because this is what I was raised in. It is hard for me to say, oh, praise the Lord. It is hard for me to say, you know, stop saying thank you, Jesus, or praise be to Allah. It is hard to stop those things when you've been doing them for so long. And even though you realize it after the thought, it's still something you've been clinging to. But part of suffering is the fact that you still feel that angst about it this is where some people are very angry when someone says bless you very angry when people come onto their page and they're spouting their religious uh, um, speech or words some people are very angry that the the mass shooting in in virginia that happened yesterday that people saying pray for virginia you know some people get angry over these things because they're clutching and holding on to that religious thing that they had and now that even though they're trying to leave it their desires to not even have it within their life while they're missing the whole picture there's nothing wrong with people praying for other people to find comfort during this time there's nothing wrong with people uh, meditating about people finding comfort in this time there's nothing wrong with people having different religious beliefs and believing that the creator has moved in their life there's nothing wrong with that for that person what becomes wrong is when you're clutching so hard to yours that you push it on someone else. There's, you're holding, you're clutching on so hard to melanin that you push it on something else. You, you talk about a superiority here while you're pushing a superiority yourself. So having that desire and clutching and holding on to it continues your path in suffering. So the third noble truth is the cure is to remove the desire. It's the nirvana. It's the blowing out. You see, when you breathe in and you hold your breath, you're clutching to life. Every religion talks about 
life is in the blood or life is in the breath right especially in the breath because in all the creation stories most of the creation stories, god breathed the breath of life into man that breath is where life is but when you bring it in and you try to hold it the more you hold it the more pain it begins to create in your chest the 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 more problems you start having in your body because you're trying to hold it you should only hold the breath long enough to grab all the nutrients of oxygen from it and other uh, gases in the air to be able to flow through your body so that the blood becomes fully energized but then nirvana is it's the blowing out it is the crown chakra of saying I'd release all my earthly attachments remember to open your crown chakra you have to release your earthly attachments so the blowing out is nirvana the releasing is nirvana. Will, this is nice. But if it all burns down, nature simply will replace it. Nature doesn't hold on to the burn down for us. Nature will replace it and bring forth new life. Just as much as you breathe out, you will breathe in again and bring in new air, new life. So the releasing of desires the releasing of other people out of your life, releasing of when someone passes on and transitions, to release them and not hold on to the pain and hold on to the guilt and anything else you've been doing. The releasing is your nirvana. The releasing is your heaven. The releasing is you opening your crown chakra and realizing that we are all connected, that life energy is all connected, that you are in the vast ocean and not in the bowl. So in order to do that, to remove desire, the fourth noble truth is that you have to, f is to follow the eightfold path. Now we're going to go through these real quickly because I want to be done with this in about three, four minutes. All right, so the eightfold path, they fall in three major categories. The first one is wisdom. And that is for you to have wise view, a wise perspective, a wise knowing, right? So your perspective, your, your, um, your view. To have wise intentions for your intentions the way you move the, the way you do things for they, the intention of them to be done through wisdom we talked about the trivium before having the facts understanding of the facts and then putting them into practice is wisdom going back and reviewing them if you don't get the desired results more wisdom so having the right intentions of doing what is right doing what is right as often as possible then the second category ethics having ethical speech taking ethical actions, and living an ethical livelihood. So in each one of them, you speak to people ethically. No harsh words when harsh words are not needed. You take actions that are ethical. You do not steal, take, plunder from others. The same laws of the Confessions of Mayat, the Ten Commandments, the Code of Hammurabi, and so many others, these are all ethical laws. And living a good life. A, live, a livelihood that is peaceful, a livelihood that is uh, in, in concert with nature and in concert with being the best person you can possibly be. The third is meditations, right? Having wise and med having meditation, the effort that you put into your meditation, into your study, into your thinking, your conscious thinking, into your logical thinking, into your emotional thinking, putting forth that effort in your meditation, your mindfulness, being mindful of the entire spectrum and not your little piece out of the bowl all right so being mindful and then your concentration to be able to focus i talked to you guys before about the bushudo code and in that bushudo code it is to wake up every day every day you wake up to perfect your trade your craft so being having that focus that concentration that every day perfecting whatever it is that you are perfecting your thoughts perfecting your energy perfecting your body perfecting your work perfecting your relationship having that focus and concentration this is the eightfold path the eightfold path just real quick again to ask why is your views your viewpoint your intentions your speech your actions your livelihood your efforts your medita your mindfulness and your concentration broken into the categories of wisdom ethics and meditation we must release suffering. To suffer is not to live. And to suffer should not be glorified. And in order to release that suffering, we have to get out of the fishbowl and get into the life. And get into life and see the full spectrum. To see the full pole, 
Not just the side of the pole you like. Just not see love, but also see the hate. Not just see good, but also see the bad. Not just see wealth, but also see the poverty and everything in between. The true, uh, true path to a peaceful and loving life. So at, before I end this, I want to invite you guys also, well, once again, come and join us in Charlotte. Get your tickets now. They're only $50 and that includes food and all other kind of things. But I look forward to it. And we're going to talk more about this. There will be a, a quick Q&A panel at the end. So we're going to have a great time. And remember, always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. And you're looking for coaching, go to CoachRens.com and we can take care of that as well. And I'm going to announce something very soon, very soon. Have a great day.